Hey everyone, welcome to Band on a Budget. Today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna try and show you two different ways to set up backing track and click tracks into your in-ear monitors or headphones for a live performance. For this, we're gonna be using two different kinds of equipment. One of them is the Behringer Micromon MA400 and the other one is the Behringer Xenix 802. Now, feel free to use any other types of preamps and mixes that you like, but for this video, I'm just using these two as an example, and you can change them up as you need to, as long as it meets some requirements or specifications, but you'll figure it out in the end. So before we get started on using the equipment, we actually need to do a little bit of preparation with our backing track and click track. I'm not gonna cover too much of this in the video. There's plenty of resources on YouTube and the internet for you to figure this out. What you're gonna do with your DAW, which is your digital audio workstation, such as Logic, Pro Tools, Ableton, you're gonna create two separate tracks. One of them is gonna be for your backing track audio, and the other one is gonna be for your click track. Just make sure that your click track also has a count in so that you know when your backing track is about to start. If your backing track wasn't made by you and it was something that you downloaded from the internet and then imported into your digital audio workstation, just make sure or check to see if that audio file is a stereo audio file, in which case you may need to export or convert that backing track into a mono audio waveform. So in the video you can see track one is a mono mix and I've panned it hard left. This backing track, just for example, it's uh, it's going to have synths, it's going to have percussion, a sub drop, some horn and brass instrumentation, that's on track one. Track two is also a mono mix and that is going to be panned hard right. This is going to be my click track. I'm going to have a count in and I have to make sure and you have to make sure that the click is in sync and lines up with your backing track. This is how you're gonna stay in time with your backing track. Now, once you're happy with the backing track and everything lines up and is in sync, you're going to export or bounce that project or that audio file from your door as a stereo wave or MP3 file. So a stereo file will be one file with two waveforms like the one you see in the picture. On the left, it's gonna have my backing track and on the right, it's gonna have my click track. Next, you're gonna load up that audio file into your playback device, like an MP3 player or a laptop or a phone. It doesn't matter as long as that device can play back stereo audio files. Okay, for this first example, we're gonna be using the Behringer Micromon MA400. And this is the typical setup that you might wanna do. So in this example, I've loaded up the audio file to a laptop. I'm then gonna use a stereo splitter cable like the one you see in the video. Now just to be clear what a stereo splitter cable is, on one end you've got a TRS stereo jack and this is a 3.5 millimeter mini jack. It's the same type of jack input or connector that you would use on earphones going into your laptop or phone if, you, you know, if you're using earphones. The key thing to look out for is the two lines or the two rings on this connector. Now that cable is then gonna split into two separate cables and they will either be black and red or black and white. It's very different depending on which cable you get, but as long as it splits into two cables with only one ring or one band on the end of it. So this is a TS mono connector and they are also going to be quarter inch jack connectors. A quarter inch jack connector is the same type of connector that you would use plugging into like a guitar or a bass. Now as I mentioned before we sent the backing track to the left side of the audio and the click track to the right. For this example we're going to use the red side or the red connector as the right so that's going to have your click and you're going to send that to a DI box. In the video it looks like there's two DI boxes it's actually just one with a picture of the front and back. So taking that red connector, which is the right signal with your click track, you're gonna plug that into the input of the DI box. Then with a standard XLR cable, you're gonna go out of the DI box and into the Behringer Micromon, which will have its own XLR input. Once that's plugged in, you'll be able to control the volume of the click using this volume knob. Now for the other end of the cable, so this is the left side, the one that's gonna have your backing track and instrumentation. You're then gonna plug that into the front of house mixer. 
it doesn't really matter which channel you choose to use that could be up to the sound engineer who's going to be mixing you at the time as long as that's in one of the channels of the main front of house mixer now what the sound engineer can do from here is actually put that same backing track into the front of house speakers so that the audience is going to hear the backing track that you've worked so hard to create on your digital audio workstation your sound engineer is also going to be able to send an auxiliary monitor mix from that mixer or that front of house mixer to your Behringer Micromon. On top of that, he can also send the mix or a monitor mix of the entire band that's going into that mixer. So not only are you going to be able to send the backing track to the Micromon, the sound engineer can also send guitars, drums, bass, keyboard, vocalist, from that front of house mixer down that same cable the the blue one which is in the video through that cable into your monitor mix and you're going to be able to control that mix using this volume knob here on the behringer micromon and then from here just use a set of headphones plugged into the behringer micromon and you're good to go if you want to take things a little bit further you could use a jack to jack cable using the parallel output or the sometimes called the through on the di box which you can see in the video and send that also to the front of house mixer now it's important to remember that this signal coming in is the click so make sure you tell your sound engineer not to send that to the front of house speakers you do not want your audience to hear that click track however the rest of the band might want to hear the click track as well they might want something to keep them in time other than you if you're not the drummer if they're using any monitors this is a perfect way to do it they'll be able to hear the click, you'll be able to hear the click, and then everybody's in time. Now on the Behringer Micromon, you've got a little switch or a wee toggle that lets you change from a stereo mix to a mono mix in your headphones. So if you preferred it that way, your sound engineer would pan the backing track signal to the left and the click track to the right. And then that signal can be sent to the Behringer Micromon and now you'll hear the backing track on the left side of your headphones and the click track on your right. However, if your sound engineer has to pan it on the main front of house mixing desk, then that also means it's gonna be panned through the front of house as well. So that's not really a good option so in this setup you generally want to keep it as a mono mix all right for this next example we're going to be using a behringer xenix 802 which is basically just a small miniature compact size mixer and this is probably my favorite way to run backing track and click tracks for musicians it is the most versatile and it gives that musician more control over their mix so that they don't have to keep bugging the sound engineer all the time about where they want their sound coming in it's a very similar setup as the first example. However, you're gonna be using a couple of extra cables and one more DI box. So just like before, you're gonna take that stereo splitter cable, sending one end to a DI box and then the other end into the other DI box. So you can see in the video, the red cable, which has the click track is going to a DI box. And then the other one, which is the left side of the audio with my backing track is now going into the other DI box. So with the click track, you're going to take a standard jack to jack cable. So that's like your typical guitar cable. You're going to go through the parallel output, also sometimes called the through on the DI box. And you're going to go into one of the inputs on the mixer. Again, it doesn't matter too much which input you want to use. For this one, I've just put it onto the third channel of the small mixer. And that one is going to be controlled using this volume knob here. On the other DI box, you're going to do the exact same thing with a standard jack to jack cable and plug that into the small mixer again into another channel. Again, it doesn't matter which one, but for this example, we're using channel two and the volume is going to be controlled using this knob here. Next, you're going to use a standard XLR cable, male to female XLR cable. And with one of the DI boxes, particularly the one with the backing track, you're going to use the XLR output of the DI box going into your main front of house mixer. Doesn't matter which channel, that could be up to your sound engineer to decide, but for this one, it's just going into channel one. You're also gonna do the same thing with the other DI box, which has your click track. Again, using the XLR output of the DI box going into another channel of the front of house mixer. In this example, it's going into channel two. 
Now from here, your sound has got a couple of options. He can now send the backing track to the main front of house speakers, and he can also use the auxiliary sends on the mixer to send it to you or to other band members on stage so that they also hear the backing track. What the sound engineer should not do is send the click track to the front of house speakers because then your audience is gonna hear all these clicking noises and it's just not gonna sound very good at all. So in the video, I've used a blue cable to indicate an auxiliary send, which is like a monitor send. And that's going from the main front of house mixer going into the smaller mixer, which is your one, into channel one. And this is gonna have just the band, just the guitars, the vocals, the keys, the, the live performing musicians, not the backing track, not the click track, just the live musicians. And that is gonna be controlled using this volume knob on the small mixer. So now we've got three independent volume controls, one for the monitor mix of the entire band, one of them for the mix of the backing track, and then the last one being the click track, all on this small little mixer. You then simply plug in your headphones or your earphones into the headphone output of your mixer. And in this example, the volume for those headphones is gonna be controlled using this volume knob. So this is where this example or this method is far more superior, in my opinion, than using the Behringer Micromon. The Behringer Micromon is a really easy or more simplistic way to set up, but this one here using a smaller mixer with three channels to work with is going to give you so much more versatility of your mix and here's why so in the first channel with the blue cable you can see it's plugged into channel one in channel two this is the left signal which is your backing track and the red cable is the right signal which has your click track the entire volume of every single channel is independently controlled using the volume knobs at the bottom as well as the volume knob for your headphones. You can also choose to pan the signal in any direction that you want, either to the left or right. And this is really, really handy if you're the type of person that only wants to hear the backing track on the left side, and then only wants to hear the click track in the right, and then maybe you want to hear the live performance of the band members straight down the middle, which is in both left and right side. So you've got so you've got free range to change and adjust the balance of the audio signal coming in. And it doesn't have to be panned hard left or hard right. You can actually blend blend it a little bit more to your liking. The last part, which I think is probably the best part of running this method, is you can now use the EQ settings of each channel on this small mixer. And this is really handy because sometimes I've got a backing track that has been mixed in a certain way that sounds incredible through the front of house speakers, but in my monitor mix, it just sounds not as good or maybe it's a little bit too bass heavy. So I might wanna use one of the EQ knobs to dial out some of the frequencies so that it sounds a little bit nicer in my earphones. Again, the same thing with the click track. If you're a drummer or a, a musician and you've got this click track blasting your ears all the time, sometimes it sounds so robotic and annoying. There's a, a certain frequency that you just don't like. You can use the EQ settings to dial out ones that you don't like. Maybe it's something with the bands, the mix that you're getting coming through isn't quite what you want and you wanna boost more of the mids and hear some more of the guitars and vocals. This part here of the mixer is by far the highlight of using this method. So that's it for today's video. I hope that was helpful. Sorry that the video is probably a little bit more crude. I didn't have time to do a practical setup run through. I thought maybe diagrams is the best way to do it. In which case you can always rewind the video and look at the diagram or the picture for your setup. Other than that, if you found this helpful, uh, leave a comment. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know. Be sure to check out some of the other videos. I did a review on the Behringer Micromon. You can check that out as well. I'll put the link in the description. And thanks for tuning in to Band on a Budget. I'll catch you later.